Hey guys, welcome back to It's Not Junk TV. I'm Jarvis, and we have a very special episode of Rescued from the Landfill for you this week. Stay tuned. Well, here it is, guys. A late 1800s Belgium Flobart parlor rifle that I picked up at a recent antique sale. Um, this one was pretty cheap, in pretty rough shape, and looked like it needed rescued. Uh, believe it or not, these little rifles were designed to be shot indoors. Uh, they shot a 22 caliber round ball that was pretty much stuffed into the end of a percussion cap. You imagine a bunch of old guys sitting around shooting this thing, drinking gin and partying. Uh, they did it. Can't believe it, but they did. But here it is, and we're going to try to fix this one up. We'll never get it back to 100%. It's really not got a whole lot of value, but it's pretty nice little rifle to be destroyed and probably parted out. So we're going to see what we can do. So hold tight. As you can see, this little rifle has been abused pretty badly. Uh, the stock's busted up in four, five, six, all of the places. Uh, there's no screws in anything because uh, it stripped everything out and busted it. The action was pretty much just wedged in there. Somebody cross-threaded that big old screw into it to keep it held together. The wrist is broken all the way through pretty much. Uh, they've nailed a couple big old nails into it. It's splintered out in two or three places. Uh, there's pieces everywhere <laughs> missing. Uh, here's the little action. It's completely froze up. I don't want to jerk on the hammer too bad because it may break the spring. Something may be stuck. So I want to give it a good soak down and see if I can get the rest of it free. Uh, can't tell much by looking down the board because I can't get the little trap door open yet. So I think next we're going to give it a good soak down and see if we can't get this to free up. So I'm going to take the whole action. I'm not going to try to loosen anything just yet. And I'm going to wrap it in some cellophane after spraying it down uh, real good with PB Blaster. And then I'm going to lay it out here in the sun and see if the heat and the PB Blaster don't work everything free and shouldn't take long. So I think after I get it wrapped up here, we're going to go in and see if we can't get the stock glued up. Well, I think I'm going to take this little pick here. I'm going to clean out all the cracks, try to remove the last hundred and some odd years of dirt and everything that's accumulated up inside this little stock. Uh, as I dig deeper, I find more, and there's a ton of it here. So I'm going to keep digging it out. And then we're going to try to get some glue up inside these cracks and get the stock pulled back together.
going to use one of my favorite wood glues, which is the Gorilla brand. Uh, there will be a link down below. Uh, it's available everywhere. Everybody knows about the Gorilla glue. Uh, when we use toothpicks, try to get it up in as far deep into the cracks as I can. Uh, the more glue, the better here, because once I get it all clamped up, um, it's going to squeeze out anything excess. But I want to try to get as much in there as I can. On this section here, I'm actually going to hold open, try to spread it out a little bit without cracking it completely in two. Uh, that way I can get some glue down inside there. Um, once I get it all full, start squeezing it back together, get everything lined back up. Because this had been repaired once before and they had drove little small finish nails, brad nails into it at some point. And it kind of had it offline, and I'm trying to flex everything and get all the excess glue and try to get this piece in the back to line up because I really don't want to sand off a whole lot of it uh, when I get ready to take this finish off of it. Um, I found on these regular shapes, rubber bands tend to do pretty good. Um, close to the end here, you can just take it and wrap it around as you can see. pretty tight this way. Uh, if you get down closer to the other end, when you get down closer to where you can't roll it around, it, as you can see I looked at it here a time or two trying to figure out which direction to go and then uh, you know you're not always as swift as you want to be so just cut it, wrap it around real tight which will help pull everything into place and it doesn't mar the wood so it's a pretty handy way of having a disposable clamp that you know, you can just cut off later and it doesn't matter. Uh, well, if you're doing something like this, remember, be generous with the glue. Uh, you can, it wipes right back off with a damp rag. Uh, don't use a paper towel because it just leaves a bunch of paper residue in it. But just a damp cloth wipes it right back off. Try to keep it cleaned up as you go. You don't want a big mess and you don't want to have to sand a bunch of excess glue because it tends to... Uh, tear up your paper and just takes longer to deal with. Now this back piece keeps trying to flex out once I squeeze the front together uh, it's going to take a little more pressure than the uh, clamp can do or the rubber bands can do so a couple big spring clamps with the rubber tips on them so they don't mess up the wood too bad and uh, that should pull it right back into place. Well, it's been a few hours. The barrel and action's been laying out here in the sun, so let's take it out of the plastic and see if I can get the little trap door to open. If you're wondering about the plastic wrap, you can put that on there so it doesn't evaporate. It just leaves it liquefied a little longer and allows it to absorb better. And it looks like we have success. It has worked. These little screws are about stripped out on the heads and I was concerned they wasn't going to come out and it'd probably be impossible to find a replacement. So, But after a few hours of soaking it looks like everything's going to come out pretty easy so I'm going to try to take apart as much as I can at this point. I'm really kind of surprised by how the uh, screw heads and whatnot look on the inside of this gun. Uh, apparently somebody hadn't taken it apart too many times or if they had they uh, didn't beat it up too bad which makes it easier for me looks like they have this little trigger mechanism attached with a screw and then a pin that runs through a, 
another little block hanging out the bottom of the barrel which believe it or not popped right out got pretty lucky here started off with a completely froze up action and it ended up sliding right apart that's the power of PB Blaster in the sun I'm going to use emery cloth, which is one of the best, uh, finest sandpapers or sanding substances that I found for removing heavy rust and scale. Uh, it blow, you can blow through it pretty quick, but it's worth it because it removes it pretty fast. And I'm not really concerned about saving any of the original uh, finish because I'm going to end up doing a cold blue on this barrel anyway. So I'm going to scrub it down, try to get as much of the old existing stuff off of it as I can. Uh, it seems to be coming out pretty good. There's not a whole lot of pitting that I can tell. Uh, so I'm going to finish cleaning it up here and see how it comes out. Well, I've let the stock sit for about a day drying, so let's pull all the clamps off and see how it turned out. After getting all the clamps and rubber bands off of it, it doesn't look like it turned out too bad. Everything's pretty straight. Now it's time to address this spot out here in the end. Uh, I start looking at it, I think, well maybe I can just spread it out and get enough glue into it to hold it. Uh, the crack goes all the way from one side to the other. It's completely, it has completely been broke off at some point. Um, but they've taken, again, a couple little brad nails and have nailed it in two or three spots. So I finally decide I think the best option is to completely pry this thing off, get the little nails pulled back out of it, and see if I can't get it glued back on.
I kept waiting for this little piece to break, but somehow I got lucky and was able to twist it around, clean it, moved it as many times as I did, and it never did come apart. So I'm going to get it cleaned up, get all the surfaces as uh, fresh and down to new wood as I can, or fresh wood without all the dirt and gunk on it. Uh, then I'm going to go back and use, just as before, a little bit of Gorilla Glue, uh, get it reattached and clamp back down into place. I'm going to do a little final clean up and prep on the barrel before I get ready to blue it. Um, there's a little rough spots here and there that I didn't get into the light on the first clean, uh, especially here around the site and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to take this emery cloth, go around, clean up the surfaces, get as much removed as I can uh, before we move on to the cold bluing process. Uh, pretty much the same as a barrel. I'm going to go through each individual part of the action and get them cleaned up, take emery cloth, sandpaper needed to be used on some. I uh, pretty much figured you didn't need to see me sanding down on a piece of metal to get what I was doing. So just as part of the prep, going to get everything sanded down and cleaned, and then next we should be at the uh, cold bluing process. For this barrel, I think we're going to end up using the uh, Birchwood Casey Super Blue. Uh, bluing solution. I have the best luck with it when it comes to these old guns. Uh, even though it does say on the bottle that it is a cold blue, I tend to heat the parts before I apply it. It always goes on better with less streaks. Um, if you do this, be aware that there is some fumes from it and I doubt they're any good, so I would suggest doing this outside like I am on a good breezy day because it does have an odd odor and I don't think breathing it would be too good for you. So gonna get this barrel uh, good and warm. Can't get it all warm at one time so we're gonna end up doing it in sections. So I'm gonna do the back here and see if we can't get it hot enough to get this first layer blue on here. Like I said before, because this is a full length barrel, um, none of us are going to be able to get it warm enough to do the whole process at once. We're going to do it in two different, or in three, I'm sorry, in three different steps. So we're going to do the back section. Make sure you overlap real good with your heat and with your bluing solution if you end up doing this. That way you don't see a line where you overlap the two processes. Uh, just Get it good and warm. Make sure you warm back up where you had already applied it. Again, smell if you may want to wear a mask. 
Uh, on this day that I did this, the wind was pretty good, so I wasn't real concerned about it. Uh, but make sure you rub in good everywhere that you already put it and blend, or if not, you'll end up with some streaks. Um, like you see here, I'm applying way up into the barrel. Make sure you blend it in real good. A uh, step you didn't see there that didn't get filmed because I had to go off camera. Uh, after you put on a good solution of uh, the bluing and you get the, it fully coated, you'll want to go and wash it off with some good cold water. Uh, I just went over to the garden hose, washed it down real good, rubbed it down, and made sure to get all of that bluing solution off and removed. So you put it on, leave it on about 10 minutes, and then wash it right back off and dry the barrel down. Uh, now I'm going to take this gun oil. Uh, I like to do a hand rub on it, so as you can see, I just put it right in the palm of my hand. Don't try to use cotton balls or anything like that. Just use my hands. Get it rubbed down and put a really heavy coat of oil onto it for now. Like I said, you want to get a real heavy coat. You want to leave it like this and uh, let it sit for at least 24 hours with this really thick film of gun oil on it. The longer the better and the thicker the better. Uh, you want to coat it on and leave it sit. Well, somehow in the haste of moving everything around from indoors to outdoors, uh, I forgot to hit record when I was bluing the small parts here for the insides, the hammer, trigger guard, and whatnot. So, what I got here is basically what I did to the barrel. I'm going to do the same thing, just coat my hands down with oil, give them a good rub, get a good coat on them so I can let them sit right along with the barrel for the next day or so. Well, we've come to one of my least favorite parts of uh, any of these rifle rebuilds, the sanding of the stock. Um, this rifle looks like it's laid above a fireplace somewhere and has about a quarter inch of grease and grime above the finish on it. Uh, having a little trouble with the camera focusing. I guess it's trying to focus on my hand moving. But I'm going to start off at 150 uh, grit and then move up to a probably uh, 400 uh, working around trying to even out some of where some of these cracks were because I couldn't get them back to exactly perfect. Uh, but also want to try to be gentle around the checkering because I don't want to remove uh, much of it and lower it any more than what it is. It's already wore out. and I may decide at the end here I may want to go back and uh, see if I can't deepen those a little bit. So I'm going to run through the different grits, try to get this little stock work down especially all the excess glue and everything I didn't get wiped off before it dried. Uh, so we're going to run through the groats and uh, see how it comes out. Well, somewhere through the time of this little rifle, a chunk of this stock got tore away. Probably when the action, when the screw and everything split apart, I'd say it all got, I'd say it was dropped at some point. But I got this little chunk of about, probably about the same time period, a little piece of stock I took out of another rifle I restored. So I think what I'm going to do is end up busting a piece out of here. Uh, it should be walnut, probably about the same time period, and see if I can't get this whittled down to fill some of this cra uh, crack up.
After a little bit of finagling and a little bit of whittling, I got the piece to go in there and fit. Uh, instead of messing with the Gorilla Glue this time and waiting for the dry time, um, I figured the recoil on this is going to be almost nothing, so I'm just going to use a little super glue to get it held in there. After a short amount of time and forgetting to turn the camera on yet again and showing me carving this piece down, I carve it down, take a little sandpaper and smooth it back out. After looking closer at this checkering, I decided I just couldn't leave it blurred around the edges where it had gotten sand away and where the heavy wear from the little rifle being used as much as it was. So I'm going to take this little tiny V tool and I'm going to sit and try to run back over some of these grooves and kind of just deepen them a little bit and clean them up a little bit. Uh, if you've done any carving, you know there's a grain with wood that you have to follow, so you got to flip it around, figure out which way it cuts better and slowly start just cutting these little grooves back in. Um, that took about an hour and sit around and cut them back in. Most of them were fairly easy. Uh, like this one here where the chip was, I had to establish them again and make sure they were there. Uh, but I pretty much run through them all and put them all back as much as I could. Um, avoiding the nails, didn't want to tear up my little V-tool. Uh, I believe these are dockyard V-tool, uh, dockyard tools, and it's a V-tool. Uh, if you may search them, I don't know if they even still make them anymore. I got them years ago at a carving shop. So uh, I actually have checkering tools for doing stocks, and maybe one time in the near f future, um, I actually have a muzzle loader I'm working on that we may end up checkering the stock, and I'll show you how to do it with the actual tools. But for this process, it works pretty good, and you probably could get away with not even having one this small. I think for this little stock, uh, as for a stain, I think we're, we're going to end up using is this uh, Dixie Gunworks uh, wood stain for antique guns. Because I didn't spend a whole lot of time detail sanding each crack and crevice, I think uh, the dark color of this is going to end up looking pretty good. And it's fairly period correct. Uh, if you uh, end up scuffing it out a little bit, some of the red color disappears. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good going on. And it, like I say, if you, as you can tell, it covers pretty thick. I like to apply this stuff in a really good heavy coat. And I use steel wool, which seems to help, uh, a 4 out steel wool, I gotta say. Um, which helps seem to get it into the pores quicker, especially down into the checkering. You don't want to scrub it in, you just want to put a lot onto it and just kind of rub it in and it seems to uh, work it in there better and leaves a smoother surface. So I'm going to let it sit here, soak up some of this stain for about oh, 10 minutes or so uh, and then I'm going to come back with a good rag, and clean rag and start wiping off some of the excess. Uh, I'll end up repeating this two or three times. I'll let it sit in the sun for a little while longer, dry a little more, the excess will pull up onto the surface. Um, but once it goes completely dry, you don't see any of the wet spots, then you know you're done and uh, just let it finish drying out. Oh, and if you're looking for the Dixie Gunwork stuff, I'll put a link below in the description. So just go down there after you finish uh, watching the show. So after letting the stock dry overnight, I'm going to do something here that I don't normally do. I'm going to use a little bit of polyurethane. Uh, my typical go-to for a gun stock is a little bold linseed oil. Um, may still end up doing that. But I think on this one I'm going to end up using it uh, because there's some shiny spots from glue because there was some pretty wide cracks. So I think a little bit of matte finish from this polyurethane end up uh, disguising some of those places a little better. So uh, I use these flat cotton pads to do a rub in. Um, it seems to go on good as long as you work fast. Use a pretty fairly thick coat. Uh, it doesn't get sticky, but you want to work fast because it gets tacky. But this little stock's so small, I think I can get it rubbed in before it starts to dry. I know a lot of you out there probably say, well, hey, why are you using so much? You're putting way too much. It's too thick. It'll never dry. Believe me, this old stock is so old, it's absorbing everything that I put into it. So, um, on the normal circumstance, I probably wouldn't apply it so thick, but I'm kind of hoping it'll fill some of the voids and cracks and just some of the overall dryness that this little stock has. So, 
Uh, as you can see, it's going on fairly smooth and it wipes in pretty good. Well, here it is after drying, getting it all wiped down, getting all the excess. There's a couple little damp spots still. Uh, as you can see, I just use my gloved hand and just rub it in and it kind of smooths right out. Uh, always use gloves, that way you don't leave any fingerprints in anything. Uh, but I think I'm going to let it sit here and dry for a little bit longer and we'll come back and we're pretty close to putting this gun back together. Well, I know it's been a long video folks, but we're in the home stretch now. It's time to start reassembling all the parts. Um, as you saw, the bluing turned out great on all the internals. Everything's nice and clean, uh, well protected, that way it shouldn't rust anymore. Uh, you probably can't tell, but off screen, I'm putting a light gun oil on everything as it goes back together. Uh, not a whole lot, because you don't want to ever use too much, because it just attracts dirt, and you end up uh, having a sl uh, dirtier, clunkier action than you should. So, just a small amount. I'm uh, going to start fitting all these pieces back together. Uh, I'm trying to assemble this mainspring, because if we have any trouble with it, there will be no replacing it. But ever, believe it or not, everything goes back together pretty smooth. So follow along here as I get all these pieces fitted back into this little receiver. These are pretty basic uh, little actions. Uh, big heavy hammer because that's actually what holds the uh, trap door down into place. There's no other locking or lugs of any kind. One thing I did forget to do, uh, there's not a whole lot of parts to this little rifle so I wasn't real concerned, but when you get into some pretty, uh, some of the semis and uh, and some of the more elaborate bolt guns, take your phone and take a few pictures of it as you pull it apart step by step and that way when you go to put it back together you know um I've taken enough guns apart this was pretty simple the sear was built onto the trigger um, it kinda all connected to the main spring the little uh, trigger spring isn't that great so the little finagling trying to get it bent back into place I think somebody's replaced it at some point um, it still doesn't seem to be latching up real good, so at some point I'm going to find another uh, trigger spring for it.
with a little encouragement with every tool that I had handy, I finally was able to get that pin in. I know should have had a hander, uh, hammer handy, but I didn't. Well, now time to attach the little trigger, fancy trigger guard back to the stock. Somehow, and moving the parts around all around the house while I was cleaning them and taking care of them, I've lost two of the wood screws on the one side. So, as you can see, I've got a little pile that I've got a collection of the old uh, slot head screws. So, we're going to go through and find a couple and uh, do a quick blue on them off camera, and then that way I can get this back in here. Here I wanted you to check out what just an extra 30-40 minutes with the little V, how good the little V tool done in uh, cleaning up the checkering on this stock after it was stained. Well, since taking it apart, this is the first time I've tried to mate the action back into the stock, and of course it doesn't want to slide in. I'm uh, going to have to make a few little trimming changes here and there. When I squeezed it together, it kind of moved things around, got it a little tighter than probably it was originally. Uh, so, real quick off camera, go out, clean it up a little bit. Uh, the little spring for the trigger, or for the trigger, yeah. Uh, it was a little wide uh, when the stock was broke and kind of spread apart it fit so I ended up having to do that off uh, camera. This screw that I thought wasn't the original is actually the original that was in it. Uh, you'd think they would have recessed it but they didn't. I guess they made it easy for taking down and cleaning. Um, but believe it or not the threads were clean and after a little bit of finagling I actually got it to thread in and pull everything nice and tight. This uh, screw was missing since the beginning, so it's again go through my little pile of uh, miscellaneous slot head screws and see if I can't find one that'll go in and and catch some of the what's existing down below. Uh, pretty much a lot of it was broken out. I replaced some to give me something to screw down into. Um, I, this is such a small caliber, I think it's uh, 
safe to say there was not enough re recoil to uh, cause any problems. Well, here it is, folks, all finished and put back together and saved and made to look like, uh, well, an old rifle that's been restored. As you can tell, the staining come out great, uh, hit a lot of the old uh, imperfections, some of the uh, deep dark stains, burning. Um, there's still that wear around the action where somebody has shot this little rifle a lot. I didn't try to remove a lot of that. I could have just glued in new wood and tried to replace it. But you know what? Somebody has shot this little rifle a lot and I kind of wanted it to leave it to look like that. Uh, I didn't want to remove all that. The big chrome knob I put there, I don't like it. I'm going to end up replacing it. Uh, the original was missing and it was just a screw there. Uh, that was something I had and thought I would give it a shot. and. Uh, don't like it. I may end up taking it to a friend of mine, letting him turn it down, make it a little smaller, get rid of that nickel plating on it. Uh, you can still see some of the old repair spots. I didn't spend a whole lot of time. I could have used a little glue and sawdust, uh, but decided, no, I just wanted to leave it. This rifle has been shot. It's about 150 some odd years old. Uh, the barrel uh, blewed out really great. Um, got a lot of the checkering back in there. Uh, you can still see some of the nail heads again, like I said. Um, the wear on the wood from where somebody's fingers and the corrosive ammo and the corrosive uh, caps they would have used. Uh, but this was a fun project. Took me about three days. Uh, I'm not sure about how many hours because I was in and out, worked on this, different steps of it. But it's been a fun project. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I know it's been a long video. I hope you've stuck with me here. Um, if you would, hit the little thumbs up button. let me know that you liked today's video. Hit the subscribe. That way when my next video comes out, uh, it'll probably be a trip to the flea market. Or, you never know, could be a trip to the beach, hopefully. Uh, but hit the subscribe. I'm Jarvis with It's Not Junk TV. And as always, thanks for watching.